Good morning, Junior Rangers. We're going to wait one more minute for our program to start, but thank you so much for joining me um, in the Q&A, which is working. Uh, we want to use it. There is a question asking, are there more events like this? And the answer is yes. So just like you signed up, registered for this, this morning's Junior Ranger program, um, go ahead and check out that schedule. There are more coming up. Hello, welcome Junior Rangers to this morning's Junior Ranger, virtual Junior Ranger program. Uh, good morning, raise your hand if you're having a great morning so far. Awesome. Well, my name is Michelle. I work here for California State Parks in the beautiful Oceano Dunes District. So right in front of me, what I'm looking at is the beautiful Pacific Ocean. In a second, I'll show you all a map so we can see exactly where I'm standing. But you can tell this is a virtual program because we have some visitors walking out there. And as you can see, this is no ordinary beach. It's the only beach in California where you can drive. Uh, so we just saw a truck go by. Let me switch our view back to me. So who knows what today's program is all about? Raise your hand if you know, pop it up in the Q&A. What are we learning about today? Pelicans, exactly, thank you, Allison. Thank you, Victoria and Gracie. So today is all about pelicans, as my friend just said. Um, and pelicans are really, really cool. Raise your hand if you've seen a pelican out in nature before. So many of you, I am so glad. Um, if you haven't, that's okay. We're gonna learn all about them. And most days I can see some flying by here where I'm standing. So we'll see if we can see any. Um, so if this is your first virtual junior ranger program, welcome. If you attended some, uh, maybe even last summer and aren't super familiar with what we're doing, um, you can still earn badges um, and prizes. I'll talk a little bit about that in the end. At the end, when I'm done presenting on Pelicans, we will say the junior ranger pledge. Um, and again, I'll give you more information on how you can earn virtual package. So welcome again. I am going to, like I mentioned, show a map where I'm standing. So I'm in the Oceano Dunes District in the interpretation department. If you're not familiar with Oceano Dunes or Kismo State Beach, let's pull up a map. Okay, so here is California. And as you can tell, that blue dot is right where I'm standing. We're sort of right in between LA and San Francisco. So here's a closer zoom in. What is all of that lighter color? What's that white on there? Who knows? Maybe someone who has been here would know what all that is on our map. Oh, I see in the QA video seems to be frozen. Is it still frozen? Okay, I see in the QA answer my question. Sian, yes. Math is fine. Thank you, Jack. Yes, Sian, Caitlin, Amel, thank you so much. That is Sian. Um, so in at Oceano Dunes District, um, we have really, really big sand dunes. Let's see a picture. Let me pull up a picture of our sand dunes if you haven't been here before. It 
And you know what? I'm gonna pull up some drone photos too. Okay, so here is a picture of um, Pismo Preserve, Dune Preserve. Now, photos do not do this place justice um, because you can't necessarily tell the height of these dunes, but they get very big. Usually around 50 feet. I believe at one point one was around 100 feet. So, so big. Here are some drone photos. This is more of where I'm standing. Let's see if I can pull out. I am just down this way a bit. Um, let's see, here is, this is North Beach Campground. And then we see the beautiful Pacific Ocean. So beautiful. Okay, let's check this out. But let's dive into pelicans, shall we? Okay, so in California, in North America, we have two species of pelicans. We have the brown pelican and we have the American white pelican. And lucky for us here in California, we get to see both of those. I'm gonna focus more on the brown pelican. And here in California, we see the subspecies, the California brown pelican. Um, and I'm gonna focus on them uh, because the American white pelican, we see in the winter time only because they migrate. Um, and they hang out with us a bit here. So day to day, we'll see the California brown pelican. So we'll, we'll talk about that guy a little bit more than the white pelican. So let's, what do they look like? Let's look at some photos. Again, if you don't know much about pelicans, you're gonna learn so much today, I hope. Um, and they're just so cool. Okay, so the top photo is our California brown pelican. And the bottom is our American white, aptly named by their colors. So here is a really cool photo of some California brown pelicans soaring above the ocean. You'll tend to see them sort of together in a V shape, flying just above the, the waves. Uh, because doing so, it allows them sort of to flap their wings less. They're a little lazy. They flap their wings less when you're flying just above the waves. So that is a good spot to look for them. Now, these guys are massive. They are huge. The California ground pelican has a wingspan of up to seven feet, six or seven feet. Now, get this, the American white pelican is even bigger. Their wingspan can be up to nine feet. They are huge. But going back to our, our California brown pelican, not only is their wingspan huge, they can weigh up to 10 pounds, which is pretty large for a bird. Um, Amer uh, bald eagles are between eight to 10 pounds. A seagull is about one and a half pounds. So this guy is 10 pounds, that's big. What else about them? They have some pretty cool feet. Now, as you can see, their feet are wet, but they don't have three toes, they have four, which is sort of hard to see in this photo. Um, let me get my marker out. We have one, two, three, and four. Now, these are what we call total palmate feet. And they make our pelicans amazing swimmers. But what they don't do is make them amazing land walkers. So they're a little clumsy when they're walking on land. Um, if you're ever able to come across one, maybe on the shore um, or on a pier. Make sure we always keep our distance from wildlife. A good rule of thumb is if they turn to look at us, we're way too close. But if you get a chance to see one walking on land, um, just check them out, give them a watch because they're a little comfy. Okay, let's see. 
Okay, that is all about their, what they look like, a little bit about their feet. Does anyone know, or how, maybe I'll ask this. What is something iconic to a pelican that we might think about when we think of a pelican? Maybe let's use our Q&A. What do you think? What feature of a pelican comes to mind? when you picture that. Allison says their beak. Angela, Fabri, Lorelai says big beak. Absolutely. Now I do, I do see some questions coming here. Um, I will, at the end of this, um, I'll save some time for questions. So if you wrote a question in right now, my eyes might not see it because there are, there's a lot going on in the Q&A, um, but I'll take some time to answer some questions at the end. Does that sound good? So if you pop the question in, remember it and maybe type it in later when I ask them, okay? I apologize, I can't do that um, throughout the program. So yes, big beak, big beak. So pelicans have a big sack. Now, their sack isn't always um, full. So when you see them flying, you won't necessarily see it. You'll just see their long beak, um, which I do have a skull replica with me. Well, I'll be holding out at certain points. So you sort of see this part. You won't necessarily see their, their pouch. Um, their pouch, it's called a gular sack, sort of a silly name, right? And as I'm pulling up photos, let's picture what we think that looks like. Called a gular sack. Definitely helps them in their hunting. It helps them with something else that I'll get to later as well. There we go. So this is the gular sack. Um, it is made out of super stretchy skin that has a lot of collagen in it. Um, and because the collagen is in it, it makes it um, not so easy to break. Very silly. Um, Gosh, that's definitely what makes a pelican a pelican, right? Now, this is a very interesting photo. Um, because they need their gular sac to be stretchy, stretchy all the time, sometimes you'll see pelicans bending their jaw around. Um, this is, a, in this photo we can see this guy's neck is sort of coming through the gular sac and they do this to keep it stretched out, to keep it nice and stretchy. If they didn't do this, um, it might not be as stretchy as they need it. So they sort of bend it around, move it around, sort of like how we might stretch before we run or we stretch and pee at the pool. Keeps us flexible, right? Now, take a look at how big this pool our sack is. It might not look very big right now or that it might not hold much but they do. So they can hold um, more in their gular sac than their stomach can hold. They can hold up to three gallons of water. Let's take a look at what three gallons looks like, shall we? So not just one of these, but all three of these gallons. That's a lot of water, right? Now we'll chat about how they hunt in just one second. Um, but, so I mentioned how when they fly, you can't necessarily see their, their um, pouch. So they only, they only really use it um, when they're feeding. So they'll give you a clue about what we're gonna talk about in a second. They'll dive down um, for their prey and their cooler sack will fill with that water They'll empty the water through two holes on either side of their pouch. Um, so that gets rid of all the water and then they just swallow their prey. But let's chat about it. Now I did say it, um, they dive to hunt. Now the California brown pelican is a plunge diver. Classic, raise your hand if you've seen a pelican plunge dive before you've been to the beach. It is so fun to watch. If you haven't, I hope you get the chance to. 
Um, but the American white, they are not bunch drivers, and we'll get to that. Um, let me pull up some really cool photos for us to see. Now, I am keeping my eye on the shoreline. I haven't seen any fly by yet, so I'll let y'all know if I do. Let's pull up some photos. No, no. So here is, I'm gonna show some photos of some brown pelicans diving. Let's just look at it for a second before I start talking about exactly how they go about that. We'll see. Look at these photos. Look at that guy entering the water. So cool, right? Brown pelicans can dive upwards of 60 feet in the air. I believe some of them have recorded um, higher than that. Typically, they'll dive around 30 feet in the air. Uh, but raise your hand if you have ever done a belly flop in a pool. I certainly have. When I was younger, I think I tried to do belly flops because I thought it was fun. But they are painful. Belly flops are painful. Well, don't you think? Oh, also. While they're diving, they're diving at speeds upward, upwards of 40 miles per hour, which is very, very fast. So we talked about belly flops. Wouldn't you think that when our brown pelicans dive, he would get hurt? Like, ouch, they're going so fast from so high up. And again, if you're one of the few that raised your hand saying you've done a belly flop, you know that that might hurt. Now, bird wings are pretty delicate. Lots of parts of the bird are delicate. So if they don't dive correctly, they could break a wing, they could break a bone, they could even hurt their eyes. So they have some really cool adaptations that have allowed them to survive and not get hurt when they dive. So their diving arsenal. Uh, they do a lot of really, really cool things. Um, some of these things you could see in the photos. But first of all, they bank left and they tilt their head a little bit to the left. And this is so that they block their esophagus, their trachea. So their, um, their necks and their breathing passages don't get hurt. Their wings shoot back in a V-shape. I think one of these photos, look at that V-shape. It's getting ready. So just before, or as they make their descent, their wings will go into this shape. And you can totally see this out in nature if you, if you watch them close enough, long enough. Their muscles tense around their spine to protect their neck. They have what are called nictitating membranes, um, which are a clear eyelid that goes over the eyes, sort of like goggles that we might wear in a pool. So they have little built-in goggles. Their beak is sword-shaped and also concave, and that helps them to pierce into the water without much resistance. And one of the coolest things is they have built-in life vests. So they have air sacs. Um, and these air sacs, they have an air sac located in their neck. They have an air sac located in their chest. And they also have a system, a system of little air chambers inside their bones. The system is called the pneumatic foramina. So right before they hit the water, they take a deep breath in and they fill up their air sacs. They fill up their built-in life vest. And this keeps them from getting hurt upon impact. So incredible. 
Now, um, they are plunge divers, but they're not deep divers. They're sort of surface hunters. So they have amazing eyesight. They spot their prey, which could be um, shrimp. It could be um, squid or sardines. They have a very rich diet, which also helps them grow so big, like we learned about their wingspan and weight. So they spot their food and they um, plunge dive down. They do all the right things. They don't get hurt. They go back, they go down maybe five feet. They don't go down very far, um, but the force of their impact stuns their prey. They scoop it up in their bill. Their pouch and their air sacs help them to be buoyant, which means they sort of, they, again, they don't go far. They sort of float back up to the surface of the water they tilt their head back and release the water, like I mentioned. So it's only the fish in their bill. And then they swallow their prey whole. The acid in their stomach breaks down all parts of the fish. So they digest even the bones. And that is how they hunt them, uh, California brown pelican. Now the American white pelican hunt a little bit differently. Who has seen, raise your hand if you've seen a duck out on the pond floating and all of a sudden they dunk their heads down and all you see are their tail feathers. Who has seen that? That is called dabbling and that is more of what the American white pelican does. Let me pull up some photos. Um, so if you're ever in um, the Ocean of Dunes district and make your way to Oso Flaco Lake in the winter time, please do. You will most likely, maybe, hopefully, see some American white pelicans. And if you watch them long enough, you will watch them or see them hunt. And so like I mentioned, they dabble. Let me pull up some photos before I start talking. Okay, great. So these massive pelicans, you'll see them out of Oso Flaco Lake, sometimes um, at um, Oceano Lagoon on the other side. But what they do is they will circle around, they work in teams, they'll circle around their prey, to sort of corral their prey, they'll move them into more shallow areas of the water, and then all at once, they will dunk their heads down to take a gulp of the fish, of what they're circling around. And to me, it looks like they're synchronized, they're doing some synchronized swimming. If you've ever seen synchronized swimming, on the Olympics or something on TV. That's what it sort of looks like to me. So very, very cool. Uh, check our time for this. So before, I have a couple more things to talk about before I open up the question. Um, and if we have time, we might walk closer to the water. We can see some I don't see any right now. Um, but some other cool things that they do. See. Oh, so what do you think? Let's see, maybe we can use the QA for this. Um, what do you think? Do you think pelicans drink the salty ocean water or do you think they drink fresh water? We use the QA. Salt, Jack says both. Sophia says both. Adam has seen one before, so cool, Adam. Angela and Connor and Micah say fresh water. Well, guess what? If you were thinking salt water, you are absolutely correct, which is crazy, right? Who has been in the ocean and gotten some salt water in their mouth? That is pretty gross. But our pelicans have adapted to be able to drink this salt water. And what they do is, um, let me pull up my friend. <laughs> um, they have two glands on either side below their eyes that excretes the excess salt that they bring in while they're drinking the salt water. So um, the excess salt comes out of these glands and it travels through the grooves in their beaks and then it will drip off the end of their beak. So that is how they drink the salt water. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this, but another, there's lots of seagulls going around me, but no pelicans. 
Um, another really cool thing about their beak and seeing this on my table reminded me, not only can it open up and down, but their beak opens from the side, sort of expands from the side as well. So that helps them open up their pouch even more when they're trying to catch their fish. Now, I believe that is all I had on my mind to share with you this morning. So I am going to pull up our chat, I mean our QA, and I'm gonna to scroll to the very bottom. So if you had any questions, now is the time to pop them in. Now I love pelicans, I love teaching on them, but I am not a full expert. So I'll do my best to answer any questions y'all might have. How do they take care of their babies? Um, that is a great question. It actually reminds me of something I didn't chat about. Um, so thank you, Emily. I'm gonna close the Q&A for a second. Um, so our California brow pelicans, their population is doing great right now. But back in I believe the 60s, um, their population was nearly decimated. And that is due to the use of a pesticide called DDT. Now this pesticide was used in farming. It would get in the runoff in the water, which um, if you don't know that runoff water enters into our ocean. Um, so fish were drinking this water and our pelicans were eating that fish. Therefore, they were ingesting that pesticide as well. Um, and what this pesticide did among other things to them was make them unable to uh, process or uh, metabolize calcium. And um, what that did was make their eggshells very, very thin. And how they care for their eggs, how they keep them warm and protect them is by standing on their eggs. So as you can imagine, if these eggshells were very, very thin, that was not good um, for the eggs. So they would break. And that is how their population really, really um, dwindled or, or got super, super low. So again, their population is up now because that pesticide was banned. Uh, so they're doing fine now. Uh, but I forgot to mention that. And I thought that's so important um, because it gives us a great picture of what could happen if humans come in and do something that we probably shouldn't. Uh, they didn't know what was happening. So um, once Scientists did learn about this. They fixed it so fast, as fast as they could. Um, and again, the population is doing great. Um, that didn't necessarily answer Emily's question, but there we go. Let me check our QA again. Why do pelicans drink salt water? Well, they are, they spend so much time on the sea. So it's very, very convenient for them. Um, any other questions? How many species of pelicans are there in the world? Gosh, I should know this. I don't want to give any misinformation. I believe, oh gosh, I want to say it's around 15, so I could be absolutely wrong. So I will go back to my office and look that up. The really cool thing when you study animals is that you can be your own scientist. You can act like a scientist and do your own research. So I would encourage, uh, Abby, I would encourage you to go home and do some research, research like I will do when I go back to my office as well. Looking at some questions. A lot of these I'm not familiar with. Again, I do my best to research these guys as much as I can. And I love to on them, but I can't always mention all this. How long, how long can the gooler, how long can the gooler open? That's this question. So they can open up pretty wide. Like I mentioned, um, their, uh, their beaks, again, not only open up, up and down, but side to side. So that helps expand the gooler sac and again, like I mentioned, they can hold three gallons of water. So pretty, pretty big. They can open up those cooler sacks.
How, okay, Dahlia, this might be one of the last questions I answer. Um, how do they attract females and males? Males do like out in nature. Males tend to be prettier than the females. So males are the ones sort of doing the attracting. And I don't know if I have any photos that show this. Let me take a look while I'm talking. Um, a lot of birds during their mating season will get what we call breeding plumage. Um, so what happens to the California brown? Again, I'm going to try to see if any of these photos show a California brown in their breeding plumage. I think this one might. Okay, it does. Sort of hard to tell this photo, um, but right here you'll see that their gular sac looks much more red than in other photos. So that is what happens um, to the California brown pelicans in breeding season. Their gular sac turns red um, and that will attract their females. So very interesting. Great question, Dahlia. Take this off. Okay, before I leave you all, first of all, thank you so much for joining me. Um, let's let me pull up um, some slides. Again, if this is your first junior ranger, virtual junior ranger program, I am so glad you joined me. We are gonna do our pledge right now. Talk about badges. Okay, so you all got through this program. So proud of you all. You all are junior rangers now. If you've already been to a junior ranger program, welcome back. You can see the pledge again if you want to. So let's all raise our right hands. And if you can read this, and if you can't, maybe the adult next to you can help you. We'll recite this pledge. So let's start. As a junior ranger, I promise to explore our parks and pick up litter, to protect every plant and every critter, to learn important stories of our past so that these treasured places last. I will keep our parks out of danger because I am a junior ranger. Good job, my junior rangers. Welcome to the team. I hope this has inspired you to watch more virtual junior rangers programs, but also get out in our parks. So we have so many beautiful California state parks here in this state. We have actually 280. So there is most likely one close to you. Uh, but getting out in our backyards or our houses is just as good sometimes as well. So um, remember to take this survey after this program because that is how we learn how to send you your virtual, your digital badges. So if you watch two of these virtual junior ranger programs, you can get a real badge. We'll mail it to you. If you watch four, you'll earn a certificate. And if you watch six and earn six digital badges, you will get a patch. Again, it's mailed to you, so super cool. Raise your hand if you have earned a real badge yet. So that means two digital badges. Raise your hand if you've earned four digital badges for the certificate yet. Maybe a couple, how about Six digital badges for the patches. Wow, that is so, so cool. So again, my name is Michelle and I'm here out at Oceana Dunes District. And I hope you learned a lot about pelicans. Thank you so much for joining me. And I am so glad you're on the Duty Ranger team now. So have a great rest of your day.